test six. The first one is an equation. And you've got 3x minus 7 is 5x minus 13. You could subtract 5x from both sides. Negative 2x minus 7 is negative 13. Add 7. And you get negative 2x equals um, negative 6. And x is equal to 3. Okay. Good use of solver. If equations are a bother, you can go down to equation solver and go and type it in. 3x minus 7. Curse down. Uh, you people with the old calculator have to put minus 5x plus 13. Y'all just have to hit F5 twice. Remember, I have to hit alpha solve, and the answer is 3. Okay, and this is funny. Three days in a well, three tests in a row is the overtime question. So what is it this time? You make $14 an hour for 40 hours a week. So that ends up being 560 and then you end up with eight hours extra of overtime. So you don't make $14 an hour, you make 1.5 that. So your overtime pay is 14 times 1.5. Now you know why we always look for overtime and you get 168 of overtime Okay, that's this answer, and you add them together to get 728. A water tank has 200 gallons, and it's leaking. So that's minus at 4 gallons per minute. And that's what the expression is. The function is you started with 200, and you're losing 400 a minute. Uh, these numbers may bother you. They're hard to read. I apologize. Power times the power. You add the powers. So it's x to the ninth, y to the sixth, and z to the eighth. And that is choice F, the first one. It's the only one I can read. Sorry about that. The first term is negative 12. What is the sixth term? It's a geometric sequence, which means we multiply or divide. So what am I multiplying by? Isn't it 2? Oh, wait, the sign's changing. I'm really timesing by negative 2. So it's negative 2 times 192 is the answer. Negative 384. I'm sorry. The other number was negative, so it's going to be positive 384, choice D. And this is great. A car, this is ratio proportion, rolls 50 miles in one hour, but we know we want it in minutes. So how long will it take? to go 120 miles, cross multiply, 50x is 72 with two zeros, divide that by 50, and you get the answer that you're looking for. I always set those up as ratio proportions, answer K. Hey, we've seen this one before. It's, again, six gallons of paint. We use a half, and then we use one and three-fourths. I do the whole thing on the calculator. Six minus alpha y equals one half. Again, minus the mixed number, alpha y equals two. And you go one and three-fourths. When you subtract that, you get 15 fourths, but look at what they want. 
they want it as a mixed number. So it's three and three fourths is the answer. And of course, that is choice B. I don't have hypotenuse and leg on this, but the hypotenuse is 50. And one of the legs is 40. What's the other leg? Use program leg and follow it. Many may recognize the answer from the three, four, five right triangle and don't have to do anything. It's 30. Story, 800, 450 parking spots, 8% are for handicapped. So let's find out how much that is by times 450 by 0 .08, that's 36 are handicapped spaces. So of those not reserved for handicap, so that was 36, so we're talking about 414. 18 are for compact cars only. How many are not reserved or are suitable for non-compact? So you just subtract the 18 from the available spots. And that would give you 396 choice D. I didn't see any way to do this. Then uh, if you're planting seven rows of trees in a triangular lot, and each successive row has two more, okay, how many trees will he plant? The first row has one tree, the next row has three, the next row five, and then I don't feel like drawing points anymore. So it's one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and that's seven rows. And I don't see any way else than to just add them up. So take your calculator. Uh, and it should give you 49, answer J. I like Stowe for this. You could just plug it in. It's A over B squared is uh, 25. Huh? It's A over B squared plus uh, 8 over 2. Um, I'm just going to stow the whole thing show off my stowing 3 stow alpha A show off I keep typing it and then 5 stow alpha B 8 stow alpha C and then it's A over B squared plus C over 2. Math of Breca. 103 over 25. Choice C. Tricky fractions to plug in, huh? Least common denominator, 21, 12, and 8 is the least common multiple of 21, 12, and 8. And for some reason, it's almost always B. I don't know if that's a good thing to be turning out. All right, the sum. Whenever ACT gives you a formula, it's either plug in for the one to get the other or plug in one to solve for the other. So the sum of a certain polygon is 1440. You can either solve it. I would just divide by 180 and then add 2. So that would be my answer. Or you could use the solver. The solver would say the left side is 1440. And the right side is 180 x minus 2. No reason to bring in another letter when x is easier. 
Okay. You just have to hit it twice. Alpha solve, and the answer is 10. Full use of the solver. Right there. This one was tricky. I plugged and chugged. So the area of this inside is 24. So we want to increase it so that the area of the whole thing is 48. So if, let's check 2. If this is 2 and that is 2, the whole height would become 8 and this would become 6. 8 times 6 is 48. That's the answer. If you did it algebraically, you would have to say this is x plus 6, this is x plus 4, and that would equal 48. So x squared, I would FOIL, and then do quad 2002 once I set it to 0. A would be 1. Uh, I said 24. That's wrong. My bad. It should be 10x. I'm rushing and looking ahead to the next problem. I apologize. So it would be 10. Uh, A would be 1. B would be 10. And C would be negative 24. Reflected across the y axis. Well, let's talk. The point is 3, comma, 8. We're going to reflect it across this line. It's going to land over here in second quadrant. That's C. Perfect use for quad 2002 is number 16. Plug it into A is 1, B is 3, and C is minus 54. Many of you will just factor it and get the answers negative 9 and 6. And the sum is negative 3. H. A certain square has an area of 36. So x times x is 36. That makes x 6. So what is the perimeter of the square? 6 times 4, 24. This one's cute. Since it's all times, everybody cancels. So 4, 5, 6, 7 takes out that. And you end up with 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6 over 8 times 9. Now just do 6 over 72. Math of to reduce it. So it's 1 12th or 1 over 12n answer H. Next page tells a story What's 3% of is times of 10 to the 5th? Type that straight into the calculator is what I would do. I'll do 3 over 100. Of is times. Ten to the, is it 5th? Yes. And you get 15390. Choice A. We're rolling. How do you find X, Chief Sokotoa? So 35 is the angle. We're looking for the opposite. We know the adjacent. That's tangent. Tangent of 35 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent x over 10. Cross multiply, and you get x is 10 tan 35. 
Notice they don't even want you to type it in on the calculator. They want to use the exact answer. This is a divisibility check. He's going to buy markers, and he buys N packs of markers and distributes each pack that contains 40. So he will distribute such that each of his 20 students will have. So that means it's totally divisible by the 24. Now, what would make that not divisible? Try it. So try 3. 40 times 3 is 120. Is 120 divisible by 24? Yes. So that's not the answer. Is the answer 8? That would be 40 times 8. 320 divided by 24. That would be no. It does not go in evenly. So 8 looks like it's going to be my answer, B. This is arcs. And the arcs of a circle add up to 360. So AE measures 106. BD is 64. And these arcs are equal. They say they're congruent, so they have to be equal arcs. So 106 plus 64 gives you 170. How much does that leave over? 190. And you take that what's left over and divide by 2, and each is 95. And that's the question, how big is DE? So the line graph is this. But the scatter plot looks like this. So what do we have to do? We have to make it steeper and increase the slope, but lower the y-intercept because the y-intercept is going to be down here as opposed to up at 6. When you add two mutually exclusive events, we've had probability 0.2, which is 2 out of 10, is added. And since you don't have anything together, you don't have to subtract. Chief Sokotoa. Now, I kind of cheat on this one. Sine of angle A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now I use the program leg to get the third side. I input 17 and 15, and it gives me 8. You could also do Pythagorean theorem. Now the question is, what's the cosine of A? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. This just means that the angle is between 0 and 90. No factor to the answer. I love Alfred Hitchcock movies, but I hated uh, this problem. <laughs> what is the median? Median is the middleest. So they're going to make me list all of these in order. I start here. And I make a stack chart. Hopefully I won't have to mess up too much. 128 is right here. And 143 is at the top. 4, 5, 6... I've got 10 movies. The median is where the five meet. They're five above this, five below this. So it's the average of these two. 
Answer is 124J. Now, this is probability condition. It says, we'll randomly select one to view. What is the probability that he chooses a film that has one word in the title, given that it's after 1965? So it's only these four movies. Two of them have one word in the title. So it's actually two out of four. A lot of people miss that because they don't realize it's a restricted question. Vertigo was shortened by 20 minutes. Oh, my dad loved that movie. We used to watch it together. Vertigo's 128. Times it by per two O. And you subtract twenty five point six and the new length is one oh two point four. That's all you had to do for this answer G. The last one's a simul, and it's, he watched Topaz, Frenzy, and Family Plot twice, and it says Family Plot is five minutes longer than Frenzy. And I think Topaz is one that we know from the previous screen. Topaz is 143. So we can fill that in and fool with the numbers. So here, the first equation becomes F plus 2 family plot. I subtract 501 minus 143. Better do that on the calculator. And that gives you 358. And then I take this one and line it up. I got to kick the F over as a negative. And there is my super simul. One, two, three fifty eight. And the other equation is negative one, one, five. The simults always take me long. 116 and 121 are the answers. So what is the sum of the lengths of the two? Still not done. I have to add those two answers together. That's a rough problem. Who wants to do matrices with me? So I go alpha F3. Hopefully, oh man, I didn't follow my own advice. I have the matrices set to another, to another setting. This calculator is hard to manage sometimes and it's a which is three negative five negative two nine and I'm minusing another two by two and that matrix is negative seven 
six, four, five. And that looks like K to me. The math is simply when you subtract, you change all of B to a negative and combine, that might have been faster. So you negate all of B's and combine them. All right, how are we doing? The uh, one cent pieces and we have fifty dollars in pennies in a bag so fifty dollars in pennies pennies are one cent so it takes a hundred to make a buck so it takes five thousand to make a bag fifty divided by 0 0.01 so what is the answer 10 let me make sure i get this in right Five nine. Oh. Oh oh oh. Divided by five thousand. And I end up with twenty thousand six sixty nine one eight bags. Oh, that's two million, you jerk. So it's choice A. <laughs> falling apart here at the end of the week. All right, just a biggie. You get 3x minus y. You cross multiply, and you get 21x minus 7y. You get the x's to one side, the y's to the other, and you get 17x is 11y. Now they want the ratio x to y. So you divide by 17 and you divide by y and there it is. So it's 11 to 17. I always teach say it backwards. If 11x, if 17x is 11y, when x is 11, y is 17. So the ratio is opposite to what you see. Getting more with vectors, u minus v. So u is going to send us straight up. v sends us diagonal, but minus v sends us backwards. Plus this long w. So it sends me into first quadrant. 11 feet 4 inches. We've seen this one a couple of times. You take the 11 times 12 and add 4. That's 136 inches. You divide it by 2. You end up with 68 inches. You take out the 5 whole parts. 5 times 12 is 60. And you end up with 5 feet 8 inches. What's that in English? So this would be 1... 36 divided by 2, 68 divided by 12, plus 5, 5 times 12 is 60, with 8 left over for the 8 inches. Uh, this one I reasoned, since it's all plus, 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 it's got to be plus, plus. Deeble, deeble, that's all, folks. Greatest value. This one took me a year to do because I typed them all into my calculator. I did 15 divided by 101, 148514. 150. Divided by 999, 150, 
One five stops. One five one five one five and one five one one five one. Now let's see. All tied. You dead. Five's got you beat. Y'all are dead. One's got you beat. And the winner is in the fourth place. Jay. Geesh, we just did this last night. We're going to travel how many miles? 270 in 12 hours, but we were only traveling this time to 4 and 6. These other times we were seated. So it's 270 divided by 6 is the winning answer, 45. This one's hard. F of G of. So you copy G. G is X plus 3. And you plug it into F. F is X squared plus 2. So I replace it with X plus 3. This is a foil. It's X plus 3 times X plus 3 which gives you x squared plus 6x plus 9. So you end up with 11. Answer H. Tricky. 7032. D is on here. And AD bisects. So look. The three angles of the big triangle are 180. 70 and 32 is 102. That gives me that big A is 78. This cuts them in half. Big fingers, it's hard to write. So those are 39 each at A. They're looking for ADB, which is another triangle. So there's 39 and 70, which gives you 109. So the third angle right here is 180 minus 109. 71. Peace function. They're looking to plug in 4, and this is the one to plug it into. So it's negative 1 half times 4 minus 1 is negative 5. You could also do sto or sto x and plug it into negative 1 half x minus 3. Tricky, tricky, tricky here. Looks like a trapezoid, and it's isosceles, so you drop this straight down, and that makes this 40, which makes these two little guys 10 each. That's going to matter later for the area. Now, they don't give me an altitude, so guess what I do? What do I always do when they don't give me something? I make it up. So, 8. Now they want the area of the ratio of the big trapezoid to the area of the little triangle AED. Plug in the area of trapezoid, and I'll wait for you a second. It's going to end up being, with my made-up altitude, it's going to end up being 400. And the triangle's altitude is 8 here. That's going to end up being 40. So what's the ratio? Put it in your calculator, 10 to 1. A lot of ways you can do 42. Solver is 1, but if you're good at the calculator, you could plug that left side into log base and that's 5 here 
and 25 squared here. That's not going to work. That will. And that gives you 4. So 4 equals 2x. X is 2. Solver would have been cool too. The left side is. I wonder. Solver's funny sometimes. I wonder if it works with log base. It did. This one's fun. It says the uh, radius of the circle is 3. The arc's radius is 3. That makes all of these 3 all the way around. So what's the model here? It's the area of the square minus the 4 cuts. Well, the square is 6 around by 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Well, you got to have a little imagination. If you put the four cuts together, doesn't that make a circle? And you can put that into my circle program. It's a circle of radius 3. So it's 9 pi. Choice. Oh man, this one's going to be hard for you non-tricksters. Which of the following is not equal to tangent? Well, that's tangent's reciprocal. Secant is 1 over cosine over 1 over sine. So the sine flips up top and you get sine over cosine so that's true that's true too because that's what tangent is sine over cosine here's your answer because that's cosine times one over sine which is the flip of tangent not tangent this one is bass aquids usually they give you the price then the discount here they're giving you the sale price so you have to pick an X for the price, minus 20% of X is 30, 40. I hate when they do percents backwards, but you do have solver. So X minus 0.20X, because it's 20% off, is 30, 40, okay. I hit alpha solve, you hit F5, and the price is $38. Oops. I did what I said don't do. I was thinking uh, uh, 38, and let's move on, but they're looking for the sale price, so you have to subtract 38 minus 30.4. The clock, this one tricks people. This is 10 and this is 4. So at its original spot, it's 14 high. Well, there's not one of these graphs starts at 14. Everybody else starts somewhere else. Big old waste of time. Oh, God, this one's off. It's a 20-sided die, and look at the marks on everybody. And the first one is, how many edges does it display? I used a very clever counting trick. I said, 10 faces are facing me. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the edge, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, there's 18 faces facing me. 
or 18 edges. That's half of it, so that means if I turn it around, there's another 18. However, when you turn it around, these six are still going to be showing, so that's an overcount. So you subtract the six that you're overcounting, and the answer's 30. Each face is an equilateral triangle, so each edge is two. You need an altitude which splits the base in half. You can do leg from here, but since this is 30, 60, 90, the 30 is half and the 90 is the 60 side is root 3 from your 30, 60, 90 rules. So it's one half the altitude times the base. This is the altitude, this is the base. They cancel and it's the square root of three. 49. If one face of the die, which of the following that it has three dots? It's a 30 face die. Three of them have three dots, so the probability is three. Is it a 30 face die? 20 face die. So the probability that it has three dots is three out of 20. Put that on your calculator, not as a fracker because I really don't want it. I want it as a decimal so I can make it a percent. And luckily it does that for me 15%. We're going to put 24 cards down, each with a name of a different student. I'll draw four cards from the box without replacing. What is the probability that Tom is not on? So, not means we're not going to take him. So the first card, there's 24. How many are not Tom? The second card, there's 23. The third card is 22. And the fourth card is 21. So Tom not being drawn the first time, this is the first draw, second draw, each is regressed counting. It's easy math because they all cancel. And you get 20 over 24. Math frag. Five, six. Average is total for the 20 students, their average was 74, 25 other students was 92. So 20 times 74, and the other 92 times 25 are the totals. Add those up, and that's your super total for everybody. 3780. But all the students, there's 45. So it's the total divided by 45. And the average is 84 for all the students. Average is total. This one's relatively simple if you get it. There's only three tests. So the median is 80, so you know 80's in the middle. The maximum is 90, so you know 90's at the top. And the range is the difference from the highest to the lowest. So if you subtract 11, so they want to know her mean, 
which is 90 plus 80 plus 79 divided by 3 is 83. Not too bad, huh, for number 52. A club has 30 members. Which of the following represents the maximum number of assignments that could be made? So there's three choices. How many people can we pick for president? 30. Vice president would be 30, but one's already the president. It's another example of regressive counting, and the answer is C. I love 54 because I love ratios. One half of Margaret's life is the same as three-fifths of Jane. Because they say it, that they lived there together the whole time. I times by 10, both sides, to get rid of the fractions. And that's 5m equals 6j. And they want to solve for m, so you divide by 5. This is another one of those loop ones. You're going to hate me. 7 to the 6, 126. 7 to the 1 is 7. 7 to the 2 is 49. 7 to the 3 is 63. Uh, but again, I don't care about the other numbers. And 7 to the 4th ends at 1. So the 5, 7 to the 5 repeats. So the 1s keeps repeating every 4. We got 126. So it's 126 divided by 4 is how many perfect cycles. So we're going to go 31 perfect cycles, and we're going to end up in the 124th place is the end of the cycle. So 124 is here, 125 is here, 126 is here, so the answer is 9. The center here is zero, 05. The X stretch is 3. So point A is 3 to the left is negative 3, 5. Point B is the Y stretch is 4, so it's 4 up. So it's zero, 09. Pretty easy question for. An elliptical. This is the visibility. If there's 90 people in a circle and I pass it to every two, well, I'm going to go around and it's never going to touch. It'll eventually get back to me. It'll never touch the odd people if it divides. So it's a reverse divisibility question. You want a number it's not divisible by, so you pick 7. This one is horrible. It's, it's 100 file folders, each that thick. So each of them is going to be placed into a folder where there are no more than 7.5 inches. So what I did is I said, how many will fit in each folder? So I go 7.5 divided by 0.45, and that's 16. 16 holes. As usual, I discard the fraction. So that 16 holes into 100 is 6 with a remainder of 4. So there's 4 folders left over each four or five thick. So I go four, four or five times that and get 1.8. Finishing up, I factor x minus three, x plus three. I factor this, it's x plus six, x minus three. The common denominator is all of them. And then I look at the change, it's x plus three. 
I look at the change. I'm sorry, the first one's x plus 6. Then I do x plus 3. I add them up, and you get 9x plus 36. This last one is rational exponents. It says, what is x to the... One third cube root of x and y to the five fourths. You do twelfths and then translate that. It's the twelfth root of x to the fourth, y to the fifteenth. You get to pull one of the x's, the y's out, and there are three left over. That one's pretty tricky.